Well, so so let, let's let's qualify that. So do their do the senior seminar apps actually work? Many of them will work very well. Some of them will work up to a point, but they're they're more than just an idea. The one I was like really curious about is the one where they have the digital sign in the back of the car to deliver a message. Yeah, I think that works. That was my like, that was my idea, huh? No, because the idea is that, so the app that couples with it has like a grid on it of like pre-programmed things. Like you're not typing in like, you know, some giant message to them. You're, you're hitting like, you're, you know, you're almost like just picking a station on FM radio or something like that. You know, you're tapping a button of pre-programmed things. I suppose there's maybe a free, you know, the, I don't know if you put in like a write whatever you want thing. That would be more like texting and driving. But the other ones are just a... You know, like sorry, or you know, you know that kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know if he's supporting middle finger, but maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure, but I, I'm thinking more like. Um, yeah, I'm thinking more for those situations. I mean, obviously, you can use it for all sorts of stuff, but you know, you've had those situations before when you've been driving and. You know, from a from where you made a mistake perspective, you cut somebody off, you didn't realize it, that kind of stuff, and yeah, yeah, you throw a little sorry on there or something like that because you you know you knew you did something wrong, nobody got hurt, but you also you know you don't want to because you don't know who the driver is behind you. I mean, you know, if you you might have a kind of a newer driver who might be like really stressed out by what just happened, and that might just calm them down a little bit, or you might have somebody who is a rage driver who's going to be coming up and you know screaming at you through the window two seconds later but if you is that is that you <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> you know where if you just say you're sorry they're like oh, okay i get it i get it you know we're right now you know you sometimes you do the little wave thing but they're not sure if you waved or if you like flicked them off yeah. you know yeah. it's like there's a borderline what do they just do um Lady, I had a just dream. trying to get some buffalo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like we were driving back from uh, like half price apps one night, and some guy thought we were trying to race him on the road. And yeah, so maybe that's one of the messages just ready, go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just got pissed and tried to run us off the road. It was freaking intense. Yeah, so all sorts of messages, but I mean, that, that one works. Or at least works right now. So who knows what he'll do between now and his presentation to break it. But <laughs> what other ones should you find interesting? Oh, uh, I thought the Dungeons and Dragons one is that kind of like those, um, kind of like, I don't know, I feel like the most known one would be like Pokemon Go where it like projects it out. Um, no, it's not projecting it. So the idea is that so when you play like tabletop Dungeons and Dragons, kind of almost like what we're designing here, like mm -hmm. the 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 successor to that, you know, like when it first became a video game, let's say, um, you've got real people sitting around the table, mm -hmm. all right? So usually what, what happens is the, you know, the dungeon master, he, he has like this little stand-up cardboard thing yeah. that like hides his roles so that he can decide if sometimes it makes sense for him to like lie about a role, you know, like the orcs attack you and like, you know, you might say, oh, well, they're going to kill him if he does that. So they rolled a six. <laughs> does that clear your armor class? Something, something like that. Um, so that whole experience of having real people sitting around the table, um, but then you know you have like maybe you know you might have like a piece of paper out here in the middle that has your little map drawn on it, or there's some pre-built ones that you know you have these little squares, so it's like a grid where when somebody puts their their character out there, they can move it you know a certain number of distance because they have a movement that they could do per turn. Um, so this is going to create that map in the middle plus do all the rolls. So it's almost like your game board. Uh, you know, in the middle is my understanding. I haven't actually seen this one work yet, but uh, he's he's a good programmer, so I think it will work. And I think he's having uh, Professor Locklear and I come up and we're gonna do like a sample thing. So Let's during see. the thing, so I, I would assume <laughs> if we're doing a demonstration where we're part of it, it probably works enough. But yeah, the idea is I believe it's you, you lay the iPad on the table 
and then everybody else is around it, you can say, oh, I want to move my character from here to there, and then the, you know, you could actually roll using the, uh, using the app, you know, all that, all that stuff. So that should be uh, uh, pretty cool. Any other ones that seemed interesting? Um, I think both of the, the Amazon ones were cool. The Smart Mirror and the Face Recognition. Yeah, I haven't seen the Smart Mirror one yet. Um, <coughs> the Face Recognition thing is, is, is pretty cool, but none of the pieces are integrated together. Okay. So there's an app for like managing a class and, and the people in a class. And then there's the ability to take a picture and upload it to Amazon S3. And then there's this ability to take an image and take another image and say, is this likely the same person? And even that, you can take an image, like one thing we were testing is when we went to the uh, uh, Ready Player One movie at uh, Marcus, we took a picture of a whole bunch of people. You can upload that picture, then take a single picture of somebody and it would like find you in that picture. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it'd say, you don't match this person, you don't match this person, you don't match this one, but you are this one. You know, that type of thing. So it's pretty interesting. You'll see the components, um, but you know, the things aren't glued together um, very well. And actually, she built, she's an IT major, so, um, and she built the um, class management piece in Mendix. Um, so I know everybody in here loved Mendix, but... Uh, <laughs> But it's actually kind of a big deal. Like MIT teaches a class on Mendix. Um, I'm going to uh, University of Alabama next uh, Saturday to give a presentation with the uh, uh, folks from MIT on the Mendix platform. So it's kind of a neat thing. Yeah. Oh, what's that thing about the VR thing with the cryptocurrency? VR thing with the crypto. Oh, 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 that van's doing. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's kind of a two, uh, a, a, a does two different things. One is educating you on um, how um, cryptocurrency works. And that, that part of it's going to be kind of similar to what uh, Josh Appel's group did at the hackathon, mm -hmm. you know, uh, where, you know, you, it's just kind of how the mining process works. But I, you know, Vans had a whole semester to work on it. So I would mm -hmm. assume it's going to be a little bit uh, um, more involved uh, mm -hmm. than that. Um, but then he actually, so it's going to be teaching you how mining works in general for cryptocurrencies. But then he has uh, the ideas that you actually would compete against other people. So he has a multiplayer type thing for VR where, where you know, let's say everybody in this class each had a VR helmet on. We would all enter into the same room. And now we, we've decided we want to mine, um, you know, made up cryptocurrency. It doesn't matter what it's called, right? You're going to mine cryptocurrency. But now the way you mine cryptocurrency in real life is, you know, you have your graphics card working on it, your CPU working on it, you know, where the idea for this is it's human mining. So there, depending on how fast you want to mine, there's almost like multiple, almost like little jungle gym things where you have okay. to do physical activities to do the mining. Um, you know, so like turn this wheel really quick or do different, you know, different okay. motions. And so the, the more complex, the better the hardware you're using, the faster you mine, and then the faster you do it, I think up to a point, the faster you mine. So it's like kind of exercise meets, mi you, know, you learn about mining, then you do exercise meets mining. It's not actually attached to a real crypto behind the scenes yet, mm -hmm. but I think that would be kind of a cool thing. So, you know, instead of assuming, you know, so if we fast forward and say that, um, VR is is the future, which I think is clear. But let's just assume that that is the case, and something like Ready Player One is really where we're going to be, what it's going to look like in ten years, let's say. Uh, and then, and from between today and then, we're just going to see that progression towards that. Well, all of a sudden, maybe you wouldn't go to the aerobics class at the gym. Instead, you put your VR headset on in your living room and you're in a you know, group exercise program or something like that. I used to actually, do they even have classes called aerobics anymore? They, always, they all have fun names now, right? Like Taibo, actually Taibo's not even funny anymore. What's, what's the? Zumba? Zumba, Zumba's like the, one of the cool kids now. You know, the stuff like that. Okay. Hey, you know way too much about those. <laughs> For oh, group X? Yeah. Is that, is that the one with the cycling and stuff? Uh, group X is when you use bands. It's also called TRX. Where you oh, 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 right. So that's like cross training, like muscle building as well as cardio, right? Yeah, that, and he's also a cardio guy too. Yeah, yeah. See, I pretty much only do cardio. 
It's like instantly laughs. <laughs> Couldn't have held that back just a little. <laughs> so just, just, just a, um, yeah, so the idea would be you just put on your VR headset in your living room and now you're in a group with other real people. So his thing brings other real people into VR, so I don't know how he's going to demonstrate it, but I don't know if we're going to have a couple of different headsets in there. Um, but then, you know, you're doing your, your mining and you'll have like a score compared to other people, how fast they're mining, you know, and if you're mining Bitcoin gold, your, your speed is in souls per second. So, you know, I don't know what they'll, you know, SOL per second. So, uh, you know, then you get kilosouls per second if you have a faster, uh, faster machine, but you know, what, whatever it's, you know, there'll be some sort of unit of speed. Yeah. Miles per hour, whatever you, whatever you, uh, um, want to call it, but that type of thing, it's kind of that, how do you take, let's call it fake, kitschy exercise, you know, because this isn't really, you're not doing like legitimate motions. I don't even know what his, his little tutorial machines look like, but it'll be some sort of, you gotta uh, wave your hands around or something like that. And then you could always just add new pieces of equipment to make that more complex. And maybe those things give you like a scaler to your speed. So the harder the piece of equipment is, the bigger multiple you get of your mining speed because you're doing a harder mm -hmm. whatever, that type of thing. So I think that one should be uh, at least interesting. Um, so now you might want to sit in the front row for that one because he's a little bit tough to understand. You never, how many of you, oh, well, Van was at the hackathon, yeah, you met Van. Was. Yeah, Van's really bright, yeah, but his English skills are suspect at best. Um, yeah. but, I mean, he's he knows what he's doing from a programming perspective. You just kind of figure out how to translate it when, he, when he's when he talks about it. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. I think that one has the potential of being really cool. I haven't seen what he's uh, um, worked on yet. I'm having fish fry with him this afternoon, so I'll I'll try to find out exactly what the thing's gonna gonna look like at this point. Huh? I don't think any movie today because we have uh, we're doing fish fry. Then have a meeting back here, and then the did you see the eighty two inch TVs coming today? I didn't do you ever go on Slack? We had like a big long conversation yeah, on the Bible yeah, VR online. The, there was no picture. Oh, no, no, it's it's, it's coming today. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> and then I said, "Are you available to come and lift this eighty two inch TV so I can watch, smile, and supervise?" That's how I do my cardio. <laughs> it's supposed to be delivered somewhere between 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. tonight. <coughs> if it's between 2 p.m. and like 4.30 p.m., we're good because the, they could just receive it down there. We just need to get down there before 5 to start carrying it up here. Mm -hmm. If it's... Uh, after 4.30, then we pretty much need to meet the truck outside because the delivery doors are, are closed until, uh, I assume, Monday. I don't know if they open on the weekends. They, yeah, they don't. Yeah. But I, one way or another, I want to get the 82-inch TV today and then, again, watch you guys hook it up on the cart for cardio purposes. <laughs> 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 What's up? It. Yeah, it should be really good. Um all right, well, since we're in the mood of blowing time, um, let me, uh, did I talk about this at all on uh, Wednesday? No, not on Wednesday. All right, so let me, uh, uh, so this thing's out now. So this is called the, I don't think that is, is that the delivery number? No, I don't think so. Um, yeah, so this is the Oculus Go. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon or go into Best Buy and get it now. Um, so this is really the first of its kind for, let's call it professional grade um, mobile VR. So what you see right here is everything you actually need to use this. It doesn't plug into a computer. It doesn't, it, it doesn't require you to stick a cell phone into it. This is all in one, there's a little hand control here. So there, now you see everything. All right, so you put this thing on, you charge it just like it's a cell phone. You put this thing on and you have access to the full uh, uh, Oculus library um, for their 
mobile games. That was the stuff that ran on Gear VR uh, before. It's a higher resolution than HTC Vive as well as the Oculus Rift. So it's a 1440 resolution, so it's almost as high of resolution as the Vive Pro that just came out. And the Vive Pro is a $900 headset that doesn't come with the hand controls, that doesn't come with the sensors, that requires a $1,500 computer to drive. So after you spent the $900, bucks, you got to spend, unless you, because we already had the Vive hand controls and the sensors, and it worked with that. So if you were just starting from scratch to get a Vive Pro, you're going to spend, let's call it $1,500 bucks for the Vive stuff, and then another $1,500 bucks for the computer. So let's just call it three grand. Um, to have a, uh, a Vive Pro that requires you to be tethered to the computer. So you can move within 15 feet of the computer, let's say. Okay. Soon they're going to have a little wireless thing, so you'll maybe be able, to be able to move a little bit farther away from the computer or at least not trip over the cord. You know, at my house, when I do my VR stuff, I actually have cord management, so it goes up to the ceiling, and I have this pulley system. Um, that uh, stretches the stuff down. So when I, so the cord is not on the floor, it's all above me. So when I move, it moves the pulley system so I don't trip over the cord at all. Um, but in any case, that's a $3,000 setup that's giving you just a little bit better resolution than this thing. Uh, weighs a lot more than this thing. Now, a Vive Pro is going to be built more for gaming. You know, very, very accurate uh, hand tracking and, and things like that. But gaming is kind of where VR started. Um, why do you think gaming, why do you think VR started for gamers? Huh? Um, well, certainly, for, if you're a gamer, you would think VR is cool. But when VR first came out, why do you think they targeted the gamer audience? They're the only people that have the hardware. Yeah, they're the ones who have the stuff. Okay, because gamers are already the crazies who've decided, well, I need two of those ridiculously priced graphics cards for X, Y, they're the, they're the enthusiasts, right? So they already had the computers or were willing to spend money on the computers to drive these expensive headsets. They were willing to pay for the expensive headsets because, as you said, they wanted full immersion video gaming, you know, which is really cool. How many of you have done uh, any gaming in VR? Well, that would have been not really VR. It was years ago, because really, we would be talking about, oh, I guess when I'm saying gaming in VR, we're talking like in the last two years. Oh, no. Probably legitimate stuff. What games have you played in VR? Just some demos. Not like, I have, I have headset or anything. You have, oh, okay. I play some here and I play some at the Microsoft store. <clears throat> I don't remember the name of them. It was the ones with the hook where you had like, the people come and try to take down the gate. Okay. I can't remember the name. Gotcha. Uh, how many of you in here have played like uh, Rover Recall? Uh, Robo Recall is pretty legit. So you get these robots coming at you, you're pulling your guns from your hips and you're shooting them, you're grabbing your like super rifle thing from the, you know, all sorts of kind of crazy stuff and things are coming at you a mile a minute. Well, my opinion is the killer application for VR is really home entertainment. Okay. Now, gaming is cool and I think as we keep moving forward, there's going to be some really cool gaming type of experiences, but gaming is kind of a... It's a big niche market, but it's a niche market, right? You know, it's kind of your, let's call it, if you want to attach dollars to it, let's call it your 19 to 30-year-old mostly male market, something like that. You can drop it back and say it's probably 10-year-old to, to that, but between 10 and 18 or so, you're asking your parents to, to pay for the stuff. But if you think about the broader market for this stuff, I think the killer application for VR is really home entertainment. So, um, you know, you go out and you spend $2,000 or 1500 bucks on a 65 inch, nice big screen TV hanging on your wall. You can watch that in one room and you've got an entire room dedicated to this thing. Well, with VR, you can watch Netflix. The example I was using is you can watch Netflix on a hundred foot screen in a broom closet. Because you don't need space for that because you have this thing on your face and it creates perspective. Um, so these types of devices, what, what really needed to happen is we needed to have a device that was no longer tethered to a computer that was a um, 
one and done experience, something you didn't have to stick your phone into, you didn't, because those, you know, you can go onto Amazon and find a, a $12 VR headset that you have to shove your phone into. And before you put your phone into it, you got to go and launch the app on your phone then put it in there. And then it, depending on how big the screen size in your phone, it might look wonky or not look wonky. So it's more of a try VR thing than a real VR experience you might use every single day. So we really needed something that wasn't tethered to the wall, that didn't require you to do any extra setup, that you could just put on and use um, at a price that people would decide, I'm gonna actually adopt this. Uh, so this, I think, so this guy released on Tuesday. I really think that this is kind of where the VR future really starts. Because this dude is 200 bucks. Um, that's a quarter of the price of a decent uh, big screen TV. And it's giving you way more screen space than that. There's games on there. There's tons and tons and tons of entertainment. If you watch sports, uh, I'm gonna do some live streams of this later on, but um, you, know, you can watch an NBA game live, for example, or watch an, uh, a Packers game live, where you can sit on the sidelines. And you can look down and see the other Packers players and look this way. You can look out on the field. You can change your perspective where it'll maybe move you to a camera that's by the end zone. So maybe they're on the uh, 10 yard line or something like that trying to score. Now you're sitting in the end zone watching it all unfold as if you are actually at the game sitting on the ground in the end zone. Doesn't that sound pretty cool? Mm -hmm. 200 bucks. Keep in mind, that's day one. That's if you're an early adopter. It's going to be 150 bucks on sale in three months. Um, they're going to have, so the real weakness of this, I'll, I'll get to you in a second. So the real weakness of this guy compared to what you're used to in these uh, gaming experiences is that it doesn't have tracking. Okay, so you don't have two hand controls um, where it's tracking these things where you, know, where you can go and pick up stuff and, and things like that because you know, A, it's low cost and B, you don't have these sensors all around you. But if you've seen the mixed reality headsets uh, that we have in the department now, uh, if you, you probably used one of those if you were one, on one of the VR teams uh, at the hackathon, they have little cameras on the front of them. So they actually do what's called inside out tracking. So you have your hand controls and the headset itself sees how you're moving your hands. Now Oculus is already working on something like that. It's called the Oculus Santa Cruz. Uh, let's just see if they maybe show a, an image that's, yeah, something like this. So this is the Oculus Santa Cruz prototype. It's not out yet. So maybe we're talking within the next year, something like that. So this guy has the hand controls like we're used to. It uh, has the headset, but this is an all-in-one headset. You're not connected to a computer. You're not tethered to anything. My guess is it has cameras in the front for tracking those hand controls. So now you'll get effectively the full normal VR experience in something that you can pack in your suitcase and take with you to a hotel. Okay. Um, my guess is this guy will probably come out at the six or $700 price point range. That would be my guess, but at the same time, I would have said the Oculus Go would have been a good value at 600 bucks, yet it's 200. Like it's that good. Even if it only let you watch Netflix and HBO and your other streaming services. You know, if you're one of those people who wants to cut the cord and not pay for cable and all that stuff, if it let you watch all that stuff on a 100 foot screen, it would be worth it at 200 bucks, right? Because now you don't have to buy the big screen TV. Mm -hmm. um, but it does so much more than that. So I really think this is just the future of VR. Uh, and if you're a sports fanatic or uh, like going to live concerts, stuff like that, there's a bunch of concert type stuff, um, you can, right from the front row. And there's already content for that, or things that were recorded live last year and stuff like that. But now that you have a device like this that is in a significantly larger percentage of the population's hands, do you think they're gonna make a lot more concerts live and a lot more NFL games live? I mean, how much do, how much does, do the Packers charge for a front row seat if you could even never get one? A lot, right? Well, now they could sell the same seat thousands and thousands and thousands of times because what they actually have at that seat is a 360 degree camera and all you have to do is plug into the feed 
and you're watching that game from that perspective. Then you can jump to another camera on the field and watch it from that perspective. If you like the other team, you can jump over to their sideline camera. Um, stuff like that. So they can just put five, six, seven cameras around the field in different places and then sell that seat. Okay, go ahead, you're waiting. Oh, I mean, I would say big time, because that was that's kind of the point, is, you know, a few years ago when VR was really just coming out, when it was still very expensive, um, you know, when the Ocula when the HTC Vive first came out, it was $1,200. Um, so they were definitely promoting it to the gamer industry, because they were the ones who were willing to spend the money for that kind of hardware. Because uh, I remember that you had, like, the Samsung you put on there, and then there was some way that you could figure out to, like, one of the cameras, you were, like, Side for basketball. Yeah, so those things have kind of been like teased for a while and you know ESPN has done something where like they'll have like one game live per season or I think they did the all-star game last year but they have a lot of recorded content where you can go back and watch like the 2017 highlights of like the NBA in VR where you know they've created you know they created the 360 degree content but they weren't streaming it live. So if you're a football fan, you'd probably prefer to watch the game live than have to go back. I mean, maybe you go back and watch the highlights in um, VR. Uh, I know they did the Olympics. Uh, uh, they had quite a few live events at the Olympics this last year for Gear VR, which is Samsung's headset. This is effectively Gear VR that doesn't require you to plug a Samsung phone into it. That's what Oculus Go is. So they already have a pretty big library of software for it because all the software is binary compatible with Gear VR. You know, Gear VR is a $129 headset that requires you to plug this $1,000 phone into it. Now, but you, only if you have one of the newer Samsung phones. It's gotta be made by Samsung and it has to be one of their compatible ones in order for you to plug it into it. So that was limiting the market. Well, now you have that same experience for 200 bucks total that anybody can use. Doesn't use your phone. That makes sense? So kind of cool. What were you gonna say? How long does the battery last? My experience so far, I just got it to yesterday afternoon, is I would say if you're movie watching, let's say you're just watching Netflix, I would say the battery probably lasts five or six hours. If you, like this morning, I was, um, I was joking, I, was, I literally was live streaming fishing for the, <laughs> I was sitting on the couch, well, before that, my wife was kind of making fun of me, I was sitting somewhere else fishing. Um, <laughs> you could use your imagination, I suppose. <laughs> She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, cast it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I only did that for like the last 10 minutes. So I would say, but I played the game for a while before I was live streaming. I would say maybe three hours if you're playing a game constantly. Something like that, two or three hours. But it has a little, um, you know, it charges via USB just like you plug in a cell phone. Um, so I haven't actually tried it with this yet, but I have one of those, you know, little charger brick things you can bring with you. Um, so... I mean, you can charge it and use it at the same time, which a lot of devices won't let you do that. So I haven't tried that. I would assume this thing, I mean, this thing pretty much has a cell phone battery. So with something like that, I would think you could probably get 10 or 15 hours, um, you know, good enough for an international flight or something like that. If you just bring the, you know, the $20 charge little backup brick. Well, but that's something like you just, you, I mean, those, those things are small, right? You know, they're not very big. You throw it in your pocket, just have the little cable coming out of your pocket. The other nice thing about this that you, uh, that is kind of an uh, inconvenience of a lot of other VR devices is it does have, um, I'm not going to call them headphones because it's not that. It has sound built into it. And it's, people around you will hear it, but it'll be kind of muffled for them because it uses that technology where it kind of like uses your jawbone to like amplify it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I was using it today and it has a microphone in it too. So I was using it today without headphones on or anything like that. Um, but you will disrupt people around you if you're doing that. But it has a three millimeter jack to plug in a, a, a headset or something like that. So you can certainly go completely private <laughs> if you want to. But if you, don't have any, if you don't have anything on you and you're sitting somewhere by yourself or fishing in the bathroom, um, <laughs> you, uh, 
<laughs> I guess that could be taken like many different ways. Um, in any ways, uh, you didn't. You don't have to wear a headset if you don't want to. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, because it actually will link when you first set it up. Um, I, I don't know if there's a way to set it up without your smartphone initially, um, but to initially get it on Wi-Fi, you had to use uh, the Oculus app for either iOS or Android. And then you can connect it to Wi-Fi. From that point forward, you can then set it up within the device. Although I did come here to school yesterday and set it up on FalconNet, um, uh, which, by the way, if any of you end up getting one of these and want to get it on FalconNet, come and talk to me. It was a little bit, because uh, FalconNet has those weird security stuff. It was a little wonky, but it, it works. Um, but I was able to set that up all from within the device. So it's possible you don't need a smartphone at all. Maybe that's just their convenient walkthrough setup is using the smartphone. I don't know. Anything else about these uh, these devices? Go ahead. Like they're already out. I no, it's I ordered mine from Amazon on Tuesday. It came to my house uh, yesterday, and I assume Best Buy has them. And they're not. I mean, I, it doesn't seem like there's a big shortage of them. At least as of yesterday, you know, Amazon still still had it. Let me let's look at uh, Oculus Go, Amazon. You only use it to watch fishing. Then? I was playing. <laughs> I was playing a fishing game, not watching fishing. I was. <laughs> yeah, let's just go here. And I, I got the 64 gigabyte one, which is 250. Here's the 32 gigabyte one. That's the color. Yeah, the one color. No. Nope. So they have a 32 and a 64. This one says it's uh, uh, in stock. You'll get it Sunday if you order it in the next 11 hours, 64 gigs. Also in stock. So it stores all the games and stuff inside of it? Yeah, stuff. on the device. It's got, yeah, he, it's, everything's, everything's all completely inside the device. Where's Megalodex? Uh, no, it, yeah, I, I think... It's either, I think it's over here. I think it's kind of on the, almost in the corner, like this curvy area here. Yeah. I think, Some, somewhere in that ballpark. Oh yeah. Yeah, I haven't actually plugged them in yet, but I've watched a lot of, you know, reviews of, of it where you, when you plug them in, the rest of it goes silent. You don't have to do anything special. You're not wearing your headphones and still broadcasting <laughs> to, to, to the world. Oh, yeah. I mean, so, you know, you can, uh, because of where it's positioned, you can probably even do some of those short ones. I would assume that um, Bluetooth headphones would also work oh, yeah. with it. Um, uh, I know some of, like, the live chat type stuff, um, they recommend not using Bluetooth. I've never had a problem with it because, you know, they talk about the lag or whatever. But another thing you can do with it right now is I've only seen it, the, the current thing only lets you do it with, like, up to three total people. But you can go and watch a movie, yeah. and then two other people can join the room with you. And you can chat and watch the movie and stuff. <laughs> they might be sitting right next to you in your living room, yeah. or they might be sitting across the world somewhere. Oh, but awesome. you're watching a movie together, talking to them, chatting, whatever, and you're watching it there on the, the big screen. And that's day one. Right. You know, before long, you're going to have, like, you know, kind of the private home type things where you have to, you know, invite your you know, family that way. You're basically, you're, you're sitting in this, you know, your, your home theater room will be like just this, this little hallway at your house, right, with just some chairs in it. You all sit there with your noise-canceling headphones on and things like that, and you're right next to each other, but you're actually communicating in VR. Because why communicate in real life if you can just be in VR? <laughs> hey, what's going on? doing that? Yeah, but I mean, even, you know, let's say, um, like, for instance, next weekend, I'm traveling to, uh, um, uh, next weekend, I'm traveling to Alabama. So let's say that, uh, you know, at night, my wife and I want to watch a show together. Well, she's going to still be here. I'm going to be in Alabama. I could put this VR headset on. She could put the VR headset on. and We could watch the show as if we're sitting there together in VR, sit there and chat with each other and stuff like that. Yet we're halfway across the country. You know, those are cool little things that are going to lead us in a couple different directions, right? 
one thing that's going to make us even more antisocial. You know, we got the whole thing already where people are like texting across the dinner table to each other, right? Um, but that's going to be even worse. Now they wouldn't make eye contact. They won't be able to make eye contact. <laughs> this is eye contact in VR. You look at their avatar, <laughs> stuff like that. So, what else? Uh, don't you think that this can be kind of dangerous if it replaces human interaction in the direction that you say it's going to go? Well, I think the answer is certainly yes, but we've already gone down that, that pipe. I mean, with all the communication we have on our cell phones, being able to text, being able to do all, you know, how many of you would prefer to, to text or something today than make a phone call? Many of us, right? Yeah, but I mean, that, that would be more of an uncommon response, I think. I think a lot of people would prefer to just do things electronically. Send me an email. Send me a text. It's very instantaneous, and you can control the amount of time it takes. So we've already gone down that pipe of, you know, uh, have people lost some of the interpersonal skills yeah. of talking to other people? So when you say, is it dangerous, that presumes that that's good, first of all, that being able to talk to other human beings in person is a good thing, which there's probably some truth to that, but you still are making the assumption that that's good, right? Mm -hmm. But then you're also saying, well, why not keep going if we're already here? It's not like we can backpedal, right? You know, what would happen if uh, they just took your smartphones away? <laughs> and we, yeah, yeah, I mean, how many of you have like been like anxious if you left your phone at home one day? Yeah, one day. So, uh, you know, this happened to me during the, the winter. Um, I listened to my audio book in the car when I'm coming into, and I had it charging, I had my phone charging. And I park in the back of the lot a lot of times because of when I get here. And it was like a bad snowstorm out that day. Um, and it was really cold and really windy. And I got all the way to the building and realized that I left my phone in the car charging. I found myself in a conundrum. Do I go back, braving the elements for the three minute walk across the parking lot all the way to the back of the lot to retrieve my phone? Or do I just go without it for the day? I think I was going to be here for like five hours or something like that. And then just reunite with the, with the phone next time I go and get my car to go home. Which do you think I chose? Go back and got the phone. I went back and got it. <laughs> I, I risked death <laughs> to go back and get my phone. How many of you would have made the same choice? At least some of you, right? Like, it would have to be le legitimately dangerous to go outside. And then even maybe. It's like, look, there's a tornado warning. Well, it's not here yet. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we got time. Right now, it's nice and calm. This is the calm before the storm. If I run fast, which you can imagine, we already talked about the cardio thing. I have some incredibly mediocre foot speed. Um, <laughs> if I run fast, stop halfway for the breather. <laughs> finish off then I can come back and I'll have my um, uh, yeah my phone but we're already in a society where we don't we've already gone down the rabbit hole you know and there's no backing up from that uh, you know we see it um, you know from a professor perspective we've seen this for for years where um, uh, people's writing skills have gotten worse and worse um, They've invented new words. Mm -hmm. um, and at first, you look at it as, you know, oh, this, this person's illiterate. But then all of a sudden, when you start hearing the rest of society adopting these same phrases and things like that, at what point is that just now the new normal language? I thought it literally means you can't read in that sense. Well, can't read, can't write. I think it goes across the board. Um, so I think the punchline here would be, isn't what we would call normal English already a dumbed down version of original English? I mean, go and read the King James Bible. You know, we actually have my, in my church, we have a British guy. And uh, whenever he does the readings at the church, he goes up, he reads from the King James. It sounds like extra cool when you have a British guy doing that. <clears throat> I think it's just going to be a change of culture. Though. It already is a change of culture, but the answer is yes. I mean, we're just going to keep going down the rabbit hole to the point where none of us will leave our houses. 
Um, I mean, we've already done this. How many of you do a majority of your shopping on Amazon? I mean, why go to the store? I gotta put on pants? <laughs> Amazon's made it so easy to return stuff too. Why use the gas to go to the, sco the store? Try something, you don't like it, send it back. I like messing you like what? I like messing around. Oh, like, well, okay, so that's more of an entertainment type thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like the one yeah, yeah, you don't even know what you just bought. <laughs> I'm surprised yeah, I'm surprised Amazon doesn't have like a random roller thing like you could just put in a price range that you're willing to spend <laughs> and you just say buy something <laughs> so, <laughs> and oh actually that would be kind of a how many of you would do that what if it was this what if you would put in a maximum price you were willing to spend and you roll the dice this is like gambling and whatever it picked you got a like a 50% discount on would it like would it look at like what you bought recently? Uh, yeah, yeah, we don't want to attach too many rules to this, but maybe let's let, let's say let's say it allowed you to um, omit certain categories. Okay. All right. So it's at least going to be in some sort of ballpark of things that you might use. I don't know. I mean, okay. I buy things anywhere from hunting to bed sheets, like on Amazon. So we could be. Yeah, but but still. Still, you're saying, okay, not that you're going to spend 100 bucks, but let's say you say the maximum I'm willing to spend is 100 bucks. Roll the dice, and it will give you, it'll pick a product somewhere between a dollar and $200 because you get a 50% discount on it. But you have no idea what you're going to get. Yeah, you have no idea what, you know that the maximum amount of dollars you will spend for that roll is 100 bucks. It's just like pulling the, uh, the thing on the, 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 the casino, right? The slot machines. Except you, you always get something, okay, but no returns, unless it's defective. You know, you have to keep it. You can't just send it back because you don't like it. But you get a 50% discount. <laughs> Amazon should watch this video. Man. Yeah, you only paid a hundred for it. Plus, you might get lucky the other way. Maybe you get a crappy prize, but it was only three bucks. You're only out three bucks for your roll. Now you could, they could have a version of this that has a bigger range, right? Where it's $100 and depending on what you're willing to pay, that's what you will pay for that roll. And let's say when you pay $100, it will give you a, you'll get something in your range that is worth between, let's say $10 and $2,500. But you are you are spending a hundred dollars. No matter what you get, it's a hundred bucks you're spending. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Oh yeah, I like my odds. <laughs> you like your odds. <laughs> you're gonna get a three pack of Kleenex. <laughs> I just spent a hundred dollars on Kleenex. <laughs> are you kidding me? You're only be losing ninety bucks. Yeah, you're only losing ninety bucks. Or you might get one of those on sale ATVs. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that seem like that might be something Amazon eventually starts? I mean, they're doing everything else. Yeah. Why wouldn't they get into, <laughs> quote, gambling? Well, yeah, but it's real money when you go to the casino. Yeah, true. Because they're already doing that at the casino, right? If you go to one of the, you know, as long as you're gambling, they'll bring you free drinks. Yeah. I want you to stay here and get, get a little drunk. <laughs> keep, just keep feeding the money in this slot. <laughs> What's this? Michigan, you have to buy what? In Minnesota. In Michigan. In Minnesota, you still have to buy your drinks and everything. But it's because it's like on a um, reservation. So they're not like allowed to bring. Like they can, but you have to pay for it. Really? Yeah. Like Nobody goes to that casino. Well, because they allow 18 year olds to gamble there. Is that in Mystic? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but they just started selling alcohol. Oh, it's like a new thing? It's a new thing. Because, see, I don't gamble. But I'll go into one of those casinos and I'll find one of the penny machines. I'll just sit there. I'll just be just active enough so that they come over and take my drink order. <laughs> I'll just keep drinking wine. And in the end, maybe I spent a buck. <laughs> like two bottles of wine. 
Actually, this, I, this, I, I would say well, backfired. I well, I, oh, I, I did way better than that. <laughs> I went into, we were up at a um, LPGA golf event up, uh, it was Oneida. Oneida. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, we were at the golf course and it started pouring. So that my neighbor who we went with, she wanted to, well, I went with her and her husband and she wanted to go, she's, she's a gambler, she likes the casinos. So we went over to the casino and when you, you know, when you go in, if you're a first time person, they give you your, your loyalty card thingy and you give you like a free like 10 bucks or something like that, okay? Off my free 10 bucks, I played a penny machine and hit like the ultimate jackpot. I actually have a video, some, I, th- I think it's, it, was on, it was when I had my iPhone, but I think the video is transferred over. This thing was making all sorts of noises and stuff for five minutes. Like, all these people are crowding around. We're wondering, how much am I going to get? I'm thinking, oh, it's a penny. What is it going to be? Like, I'm going to win like 80 bucks or something like that. Okay. So in the end, I could choose either a whole bunch of free rolls, like, I don't know, like 700, 700 free rolls. Or I could choose like a gambling thing where I would get an amount of money between like $500 and $1,500. So I just, give me the money. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I got like seven ninety dollars or something like that. So I walked in with nothing. They gave me $10 free dollars. I walked out with cash, <laughs> almost 800 bucks, playing the penny machine. And I had four drinks. Yeah. Sounds like a good day. That was a good day. <laughs> but the thing is, you had all these like gambling addicts standing around there, these, these, these older ladies, and like, oh, f- this is like 500 spins. You could be here all day. Like, I'm just going to lose the money. <laughs> no, I'm going to cash out and leave. <laughs> this is the last time I'm going to a casino. <laughs> and the really funny thing is, my this was uh, my neighbor, the. Uh, she had already, like, she went in, I think she said her limit was 100 bucks or something like that. She was, she had already lost it. So she went to the restroom, and I just sat down at the penny machine by where she was in there. And her husband's out there with me. And, like, my second roll, I, I, this thing starts going berserk. And, uh, yeah, so walked out with, you know, all this money from nothing. It was a, it was a good day. All right, well. Class is over. <laughs> um, do check out the Oculus Go. Heavily, heavily, heavily recommend it. Um, it'll be $200 well spent, especially if you're a big sports fan and stuff like that. And I would expect uh, more and more content to be available over the next two or three months. All right, I'll see everybody on Monday. Don't forget to check the uh, senior seminar presentations and make your plans to uh, go and attend as many of those as possible.